Hi everyone, welcome to part 3, which is your very own guide to writing functions. So if you plan on calling other functions or using saved registers, you'll need to use the following function template. Uh, as you'll notice, uh, there are some lines missing here. So let's work through this and fill them out. So the first thing to note is that function foo is a function that will be calling other functions. So, um, so at the beginning, we'll go ahead and store the return address uh, in addition to the other stored registers. So uh, let's jump right in. So the first thing we need to do is increment the stack pointer by an amount that lets us store our stack frame. Um, so we'll go ahead and have add IU the stack pointer, the stack pointer again, and minus frame size. So how do we calculate frame size? So in this case, we have one, uh, one space for the return address plus a space for each of the saved registers. So let's say we have n saved registers for now. Uh, and each of those is four bytes. So we multiply that by four. Um, so, so that's how you get your frame size. So now that we've created space on the stack uh, to store our variables, let's go ahead and actually store them. So we'll store first ra to 0 away from the stack pointer. So if we draw uh, our memory here, um, after this line, our stack pointer is now here. And so we're storing RA here. We've stored the value in the register RA to that space in memory. So next, we'll go through and store each of our saved registers, uh, the registers beginning with an S. So we'll again have a store word, a dollar sign, start with 0, and we'll store that 4 away from the stack pointer address. So, so this right here is stack pointer plus four. Um, and so we're going to store S0 here in memory. OK, so finally, we'll go ahead and store uh, the last of our saved registers. So we'll just call that x. Um, and the uh, the offset of that is frame size minus 4 away from the stack pointer. Um, so great. So now we've, we've gone ahead and filled in our prolog. Uh, we've saved all of the saved registers onto the stack um, in here, just as many as we need. Um, so now, now we've finished the prolog. So next, you'll have. Uh, the body of your function. Uh, and here's where you'll do things like storing arguments if you need to before making other calls, storing return values, things like that. Uh, so next, we'll go on and fill in the epilogue. So, uh, so the first thing we'll do here uh, is re restore all of the saved registers we, we put onto the stack before. Um, so we'll go ahead and do a load word uh, for the last saved register. So we have sx, frame size, minus 4, offset from the stack pointer. Next, we'll go through and load the rest of them. Um, so here, we first load back the 0th s register. Uh, so now we're done copying, uh, now we're done restoring the values of all of our saved registers. So finally, we'll go ahead and restore the RA register for our return address. Uh, then, now that we're done dealing with the stack, we'll re-increment our stack pointer to 
using the frame size. Uh, and then finally, we jump back to the function that called function foo. And so here, you'll notice that we had our stack going down this way. Uh, we incremented to here. We saved a bunch of values. Uh, and then once we were done, we didn't go through and clear these or anything. Instead, we just decremented the pointer. And so now all these values remain here, but that's where junk comes from. And so these values now have junk if we try to use them in the future. And that's it. So basically what we have now is a simple little template to writing functions in MIPS. Uh, and it'll help you keep track of everything you need to do that other languages do for you automatically. Uh, and so now you get to see kind of the underpinnings of how function calls work. So I hope that was helpful. Have a great day.